my main purpose was to be able to maintain peace. As I stated before I came to the courthouse, as I stated on last Sunday, as I stated on today, I believe in the peace of God. But also what I believe is that how I was treated and handled, I don't believe in my heart that anybody who's trying to create peace should have been arrested. After asking all of the kids to leave and the adults that were here and they dispersed, for me to be arrested, not only as a minister, but also as a realtor in this city to be arrested. I want you to understand, most of you all are thinking, I wanna to speak to my black brothers and sisters. Most of you think that this is only about black and white, but I need you to understand that the 40 people that were arrested with me, 30 of those were white Caucasians. There was a white blonde who was not even a part of the protest that came to the library just to see if it was open and got caught up in the protest. What happened to me is that when I was on the back of that paddy wagon, look at me, I'm an educated woman. I'm a woman that operate in a spirit of protocol and peace. Yes, I have three sons, it's hard to sleep, but to end up on the back of a paddy wagon and brought out in the middle of a field for two hours to be detained so that they can issue a curfew, which means my bail was increased, which means the time that no one could bail me out. Let me say this to you. Mayor Curry, your parents know me. I'm one of the realtors that they wanted to list their house. Sheriff Williams, I haven't had the honor of meeting you, sir, but I respect your office. And I wanna be able to say that after taken into custody, no, I didn't cry, I couldn't cry, because all of those teenagers needed someone with a voice of strength to stand for them. I believe that day that God used me like he did Joseph. Yes, I was thrown in the pit, but I wanna be able to say this as well, Things have to change. Not every police officer was bad, was, is bad. My father was a police officer. Heck, I'm a retired real estate investigator. I respect authority. I respect the seat of the police. I respect the office of our state attorney. I respect the office of our mayor. I respect the office of 45. But I need you to understand me. We were called thugs because we are protesting. Let me give you the acronym for thugs and I wanna make sure that it trickled all over the United States. Thug, spell it for me, T-H-U-G. I'm a sanctified thug. I am the humbled under God. That's what a thug is. I'm a sanctified thug, the humbled under God. Let me tell you something. I've talked to you as a protester, I've talked to you as a preacher. Let me tell you this, as a prophetess as a prophetess and an awesome woman of God. I only speak what God say. All lives matter. Not just black lives, not just white lives. And I understand that we operate in white privilege, but all lives matter. And if you were to ask me what needs to take place, I wanna to say to those people who are trying to make a trip to come to Jacksonville, stay home. You don't live in Jacksonville, stay home. We don't want your protests here. Let me tell you something. What happened to George Floyd? is uncalled for. I believe in my heart that's murder. But I'm going to allow them to bring justice. Are you hearing me? You know why? I believe in justice because I have peace. I want to say a few more things and I'm out. Turn it over to my attorney. The reason people act the way they do, you're haunted by your fear. You believe that I'm going to respond the way you responded. You can't even believe that a black woman will be standing on the same steps that was arrested that she could forgive. Yes, I can. Let your conscience allow you to be free. The gentleman that was locked up for 37 years for a crime that he didn't do that's on American talent, this is what he says, freedom is in the mind. Freedom is in the mind. That's the reason why I created BAM Boot Camp, Bold Aggressive Moves. That's what we do. And the preacher in me still has to come out, Philippians 4 and 7. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, 
shall keep your heart, your heart, your heart, and my heart, and our minds through Christ Jesus. My bishop says this, we all must embrace anti-racism. It hurt everyone. Lastly, let me read this poem, and I'm going to turn it over to my attorney. What if this poem is exclusively for the officer who arrested Dr. Delane Smith with my cute self in a jail uniform? What if, what if America was not so greedy? What if the master had not a slept with my great grandma Edie? What if a black man was just as respected out of his uniform? And what if all white women were respected without a breast or a butt lift? What if child support was not the parent's referee? But what if health care was issued to everybody just for free? What if, I'm talking to the officer that arrested me, what if you were forbidden in singing the rapper's song? Oh, I know, you'll come up with another law to make it all wrong. What if all preachers live holy and all men stop this abuse? Our daughters could be savage, and guess what? Not wretched, by no means loose. What if grown women were healed from the pain of their dad and black men stop mimicking your master and treat me like I never had? Hmm. What if all white men stop being so afraid that when he come out of his uniform, you won't try to put him in an early grade? What if white men stop stole? What if white men never stole our land? What if they never stole our freedom? George Floyd, Martin Luther King Jr., they would still be here with their plans. What if the woman that I met in jail was given her daily showers? multiple educational opportunities, and just one motivational hour. What if George Floyd had to live? Honey, he'd have married what you despised. What if Martin Luther King Jr. had to live? He'd have still continued with no violence but changed lives. What if Jesus never would have died? We still would be in bondage, believing all of those lies. Be free, my brother. Be free, my sister. What if the people would stop and pray? What if the people would forgive with grace? What if the people would seek his face? He said, I'll heal your land and I'll give justice to every case. Because I am a black woman, I was arrested indeed. But I released the sound of peace and my city was free. I obeyed God Jehovah. I followed all the protocol. There was no violence on Sunday and no deaths at all. Had I been a black man, I'd have been arrested and beaten. Had I been a white woman, I'd have been escorted undefeated. This world is in trouble. You're missing two things. You're missing the voice of God and men with pure hearts. I was faced with 300 JS officers on my left and SWAT team on my right. I was facing military in my face. And here I was standing with no armor. Are you hearing me? And my rights were taken away. You have to know how to make America great again. I need them to clear my name, restore my rights, and start being peaceful and stop inflicting pain. I'm not your enemy because I have a voice. I'm a saved, sanctified black woman serving God. I don't have a choice. I've been hurt by others and I've been left by men. But bitterness is not even my portion, but I rise again. I'm anointed to help you only if you receive. But it's hard to receive because you've been deceived. Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, I love my country. Governor Ron DeSantis, I love my state. Mayor Curry, sir, I love my city. But if you call Prophetess Delane Smith, I won't be late. Lastly, I'm a good black woman and I'm a prophet to this nation. I won't stop loving not even one inclination. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> How do I? <laughs> I got a call uh, Sunday night uh, from a friend, Brenda, saying that Dr. Smith was arrested for an unlawful assembly and um, got a chance to talk to Miss or Dr. Smith that morning, Monday morning and talk to her about what happened. I didn't have a police report. I just got the police report today, but she was arrested for unlawful assembly. Unlawful assembly. Now, the sheriff needs to know that you can't arrest 
yourself out of these problems. Just kind of arrest people and expect the problem to go away. It's more than just that. The Constitution gives us a right to assemble. Matter of fact, the First Amendment states that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of a religion, of which he's a minister, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or the right of people to peacefully to assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. And that's exactly what was done that day. Looking at the video that I saw Sunday night, that's all they were doing was protesting peacefully. And not only were they protesting peacefully, but Dr. Smith was assisting them, giving them water, telling them from the video that you guys have seen, saying, protest peaceful. Don't riot. Don't slam nothing. Don't disobey the officers. Do it peacefully. And that's exactly what they went out to do. Nevertheless, they got arrested under Florida Statute 8702, which states that if three or more persons meet together to commit a breach of the peace or to do any other unlawful act, each of them shall be guilty of a misdemeanor of a second degree, punishable as provided in 775.082. Now, most of these people who went before the judge Monday morning, if they did not bond out, they were sentenced to more than likely five days in jail. And from my understanding, they were adjudicated guilty. And these people had a peaceful protest. Now, these weren't individuals who were out there slamming in windows, uh, busting out car doors and windows, things of that nature. They were protesting peacefully. They were protesting on these grounds right here in front of this courthouse, in front of that flag, the red, white, and blue. Now, Martin Luther King had a quote many years ago. He said, the injustice anywhere is a threat to our justice system everywhere. Now, although these officers, in my opinion, didn't have the proper judgment, they witnessed her. They were beside her as her Facebook Live would show. They witnessed her talking to the young kids, telling them what to do, praying with the young folks, telling them to be safe, trying to do the things that you would think that the police officers would want, would want her to do, try to make it peaceful. But I think a mistake was made somewhere. A lack of judgment, I'm not sure, but a mistake was made, especially arresting her and others who were protesting peacefully. Now, we need to start having conversations because those young kids who saw this Dr. Smith, this woman, talk kind to them, help them, those same kids are now seeing this young lady Dr. Smith get arrested. So how may that young kid grow up now? You think they had distrust in police officers before. Now they send such a nice lady who's doing everything correct, go off to jail. How do you think they might feel now? We need to come together. I saw this morning a, 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 a chief of police, I think it was in Houston, Texas. How that chief of police, you know, you gotta be human. You just can't come with just force. He said, don't accept my kindness as a weakness. Mm -hmm. He was kind. He went up, he walked with the people because he realized they're human. The protesters are human. They just want things to change. You know, they see people, black individuals get arrested all the time on TV, on Facebook, and now they witness it live. You know, and what does that tell them? What does that show the people of Jacksonville, we have a constitutional right to protest, especially when it's done peacefully. I don't know how any of these individuals should have been arrested up under this statute, seeing what I saw on the steps of the courthouse on Sunday, May 31st. Now, I'm trained in the law, but this lady is a minister, Dr. Smith. She's trained to care about people. She was out there that day caring about people. And the thing she wanted most was for those young kids who she looked at as, a, as her sons, as her kids, she didn't want them to go to jail, only to unfortunately have herself go to jail. Now, Jacksonville, we need to get together. Politicians, we need to get together. The citizens of Jacksonville, 
we need to get together to change the environment because only then, only then will things change really. Thank you. I am the Reverend Elizabeth Yates with the African Methodist Episcopal Church. I'm here today to stand with my friend that I've known for more than 20 years to speak on her moral and spiritual integrity. She had garnered the children's trust. And what I feel that this city needs to do is to learn about millennials. Millennials do not join organizations mm -hmm. such as the NAACP, SNCC, CORE, Black Coalition. They don't join those kinds of organizations. But what they do join is a cause. And they don't follow leaders. They all act individually. And they text each other and mm -hmm. say, meet me so-and-so. Are you down with me? Mm -hmm. And they join each other. We don't even know how they operate, but yet we will put them in jail. Mm -hmm. This is not our grandfather's protest. Mm -hmm. This is not our father's protest. These are young people, 18, 19, 20 years old. They operate in a different manner. Wouldn't it behoove us to learn what that manner is so that they will not grow up and grow old with the same attitudes as others who were raised maybe to be racist? So if we expose ourselves to each other, we will find that we are more like each other than we ever realized. I speak today on behalf of a woman who had reached them. They had begun to trust her. And I too agree with Attorney Davis that they need to be a conversation for all of us to come together and learn how to just get along. Amen. Let me say this. I want to thank everyone for coming out. I want to thank uh, my dear sister, Lady uh, Postel. I want to thank God for Representative Daniels, awesome woman of God, who is making a tremendous difference. I really want to be able to say I thank God truly for my attorney who came at the time. I thank God for my family. Uh, I, I, I thank God for my sons. I have three black sons that are still breathing. I really want to be able to say back to Minnesota, I pray that the Lord can bring healing and that George Floyd's fiance is able to forgive the officer that brought death to her fiance. I wanna to say to the officer who actually put me in handcuffs, I forgive you. I forgive you because you don't represent what my father stood for. My father was a police officer. You don't represent what I knew of Chief Walter McNeil when I worked in Tallahassee. So one bad apple but I do want to say this, those of you who are in authority, when the wicked rule, the people suffer. But when the righteous rule, the people are blessed and are happy. So I want to end this with a prayer. I also want to say I thank God for my bishop. My bishop is aware that I'm here. He had a previous obligation, but I did take his counsel. All of the police officers, every black man is not your enemy. And to all of the white students, to the white female with the green hair, who the officer broke her arm, to the other white female who was 126 pounds, who the officer stepped in her face. And when she got to jail with me, she had the shoe print in her face. So I wanna tell you guys, it wasn't just about the African-Americans that day on Sunday. There were a lot of Caucasians that went through some pain. But I did meet several ladies in jail and I declared that I'm gonna do more jail ministry to help those ladies out. So me going to jail was not in vain, but the officer that um, arrested me, even though I can't find my police report, sir, 
you are forgiven. And for those of you who have made plans to come to Jacksonville to destroy this city, I said, I said it Sunday, I said today, not on my watch. I just will not be praying at this courthouse. I will be praying at my house. <laughs> Father God, we thank you for those who have gathered today. Father, we thank you for a spirit of peace. Father, I ask that you bless our president. Father God, bless our mayor of this city and bless Sheriff Williams. Father, we thank you for every officer. I thank you for every race that is represented today. I bless you for every church, every bishop. They have not been able to enter into their sanctuary. And Father God, it is these women clergy that have stood with me. Father God, we bless you. I thank you for my attorney. God, we give you glory. God, we give you praise. And God, we'll say it just like Jesus said it, forgive them for they know not what they do. In Jesus' name, amen. Go amen. and be blessed. Well, one of the things you have to understand is if, if you don't have Christ in your heart, it's hard to forgive anybody. But when you make up in your mind you're going to do what Jesus did, for years we've always worn bracelets, WWJD, what would Jesus do? That's what Jesus would do. Jesus would forgive him. So I forgive him. If Jesus could forgive people, he had 39 lashes with glass whipped across his back. And if I was the type of Christ for last Sunday Pentecost, then so be it. I forgive him. Could you speak to being taken away, being held in a field, not knowing what was next, sort of what ended up happening Sunday night or even mm -hmm. Monday mm -hmm. during the paving process? Yes, the only thing that, let me tell you the most, most frustrating thing. Let me give you this. The most frustrating thing is, is to know where you are in the, at, at this courthouse and to be taken away for two hours, I'm a realtor. I know the jail is five minutes away. So to take me over into the field by the La Villa Arts of School and keep me detained for two hours, then all of a sudden my prophetic gift had to kick in. So my prophetic gift is there's a purpose and a motive of why they detained me for two additional hours. The purpose was so that they can create a mandated curfew. What people don't understand, people stay home. What we're gonna do, if you, if you want to be empowered, the Bible said my people are destroyed, not for protesting, not for sin, but for the lack of knowledge. We have a lot of professional NFL ball players, tennis players, they are all professional on the courts, but nobody understand this court. Are you hearing me? You wanna dribble courts? You wanna hit the tennis ball? I need every black male, I need every millennial, I need you to understand this court. You are a defendant if someone fouls something against you. So we need to understand the courts. You need to understand how to file motions. You need to understand, listen, the police officer doesn't just always just come to you, he comes to you because of a minor infliction. Your tail light is not fixed. Young man, go fix your tail light. Your driver's license are suspended. Go have your license renewed. It's minor things that draw them to you to make you a target. And when they come, the Bible said a soft answer turns a wrath, turns away wrath. So when they come with negative words, who are you? What are you doing here? Any grown man doesn't want to be treated like a boy. No one. And the reason that those young kids listen to me, as I said, adults have to stop being greedy and take care of your children. The reason those white kids listen to me is because they used to listen to the voice of a maid. But I'm letting the sheriff department know, I'm no longer your maid. I'm a good looking, a smart black woman with a doctorate degree. But they listened to what they were trained to hear. Next question. What's next? Hopefully when the, um, uh, the honorable, honorable Melissa Nelson's office look at the facts of this case, along with the video, I'm sure that the right decision will be made and, and justice uh, will be served for Dr. Smith. And I'm hopeful that justice will be served for all the ones who have those cases pending. because, uh, And that's all we're looking for is just justice, not according to race, religion, uh, creed, just justice. And that's what that flag I'm an ex-military guy. I was in the Air Force. 
I was a prosecutor. I put people away in jail. I worked at the city of Jacksonville, the general counsel's office, and I'm in private practice. But I think judgment, for one, with the officers in charge, better judgment. Mm -hmm. Just don't, and I, I, I'm assuming they say, they're going to say they're following orders, but when you got a lady out there helping them, judgment would be, okay, ma'am, thank you for your help, but you need to leave as well, not take her to jail. Mm -hmm. yeah. I need to say this on the news, and then we're going to end it. The last thing I want to be able to say, that as a result of me going to jail, the female officer, when I showed up, she said, I heard you're live. When I left the jail, Officer Stafford shook my hand. He heard the fact that I was trying to keep peace. But what happened was, there has been an order, Sheriff Williams. Sheriff Williams, I need you to hear me, sir. There has been an order that the people that are in jail could not have their rights because there was a protest. They were on lockdown for three days. Those women could not take a shower for three days. Can you imagine a woman can't bathe for three days? Those women couldn't have phone calls for three days. They couldn't be out in the common area, pregnant females. So if the authorities don't take away from anything else that I've asked, Sheriff Williams, please, you have some wonderful female deputies. Those women ran that unit and they treated me with respect. Yes, they did. But the officer who handcuffed me did not. But once I arrived, I left out as Mrs. Smith. And the ladies inside that jail, they said, that's that preacher lady. So I want them, if they ever see this video, this preacher lady, this preacher lady will intensify and spend more time with jail ministry. It's just that I will be visiting and not an intake in number 555. <laughs> we will call this session to close. Thank you for everyone for coming. And uh, thank you again for interviewing me. God bless. Thank you. Love you, Facebook.